Live on the ground from Galvanize, San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Amplify Women's Pitch Night. Now here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Galvanize in downtown San Francisco for the Girls in Tech Amplify event. It's a women's pitch night. So there's 10 companies founded by women pitching to try to get some money. I think there's $10,000 being awarded tonight and also some venture capitalists in the crowd that maybe can make a more significant investment. So we're excited to be here because this is where innovation happens. This is the roots of Silicon Valley. People get an idea, they bring it to fruition, get a few bones, build a company. So our next guest is Laura Malcolm. Welcome, Laura. She Thank is you. the founder of Give in Kind. So my little notes here say, changing the way we give support. So tell us a little bit more about Giving Kind. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we started Giving Kind after experiencing a significant personal loss in our life. And we found that the ways that were available out there to coordinate help, especially when you uh, are, are uh, far away from the person that's needing help, aren't great. So there's options out there to, to set up uh, meal calendars to give help, to send money, um, but all of these are really single solution platforms. And we thought, yeah, there has to be a better way for people to be able to help when they're far away to meet all of these needs that people have during, during one of these times of need. So we built Given Kind to be the one place to, uh, to update your family, to manage needs, to find the right thing to send during a time of need, uh, to read articles, to find the right thing to say during a time of need. Right. So really a, a one-stop shop for giving support, making it much easier to give that support from anywhere when it's needed. So, so how do you market something like that? Because because obviously, like you said, there, you had a tragedy, it wasn't planned for, it's not like you're, you know, you're saving your money for something that you want. How do you get the word out uh, to people that want to take advantage? Because like you said, when something happens bad to someone that you know, yep. oftentimes you want to do something, but you just don't know what to do, how to do, where to do. Yeah. So there must be a huge need. It is, so we're focused right now on brand awareness because like you said, it's a, we're, we're a timely service. People need to know about us at the moment it happens so that they can set up one of these, one of these uh, calendars for somebody else. Um, so we've been focused on working with influencers and bloggers. We've had a, a couple of influencers not, not paid uh, who've jumped on our content and shared it out to their uh, followers, over five million people so far. It's been shared with a couple of, of really awesome influencers sharing, uh, sharing our posts to try and build that awareness. What we're focused on then is, um, is uh, uh, working with healthcare organizations, getting in with uh, discharge coordinators, social workers, making sure they know about all the tools, because what we really do is alleviate some, some pain points for families who are trying to coordinate, say when someone's in the hospital, right? You start a cancer treatment, and you've fallen and broken your leg, you have an elderly grandparent who needs support, and you have all these families going, okay, well, who's going to make sure they, their dog gets walked, and who's going to make sure, and, and you know, on that note, we have doctors pointing out that they, they check elderly people out of the hospital uh, against medical advice because there's no one there to walk their dog. So we're trying to create this awareness. They're wow. like, hey, if everybody jumps in and not only jumps in and offers to walk the dog, but is made aware of all of the services that are available using something like, uh, you know, Rover or WAG or some where you can send a dog sitter to someone right, right. Um, to try and help help meet those needs. So, so, so what, are the, what are kind of the, the top level applications food, walking dog, that, that, that are kind of the things everyone thinks about. And what are some of the ones that people people don't really think about, but that are really important to the people in need? Right, so we, we when our user surveys said, well, what's interesting is, first of all, what our user survey find is that what people um, tend to do in these times of needs is why something like GoFundMe has gotten so popular. Send money, right? Start a fund, right, send right. money. But that's not actually the thing that people most often want to send or receive during a time of need. What do they want? They want house cleaners. They want somebody to send them a gift of Cleanify, to pull up on their app and have a house cleaner come to their house. They need help with childcare, dog walking, groceries. Um, so again, we're trying to tie into all of these on-demand services that make it so easy to say, I'll help you meet those needs. I'm going to send you a gift certificate for Instacart or Amazon Prime to make sure you can get those groceries at your door. Right, so great opportunity to leverage kind of an API economy where you're, you're really a network to pull in all these other services. Exactly. But the, the part you talked about before we turned on the cameras too was then there's the content aspect because 
th there's the commerce part of it, but then there's really the content, and people need this content around this community of this very particular situation that they're there in. is. And we've, we've but we've actually tied that back into commerce as well, because what we found is there was there's great content out on the web today, right? 21 things to do for your friend who has cancer. What's missing from that is none of it's actionable. So then you find this list, and then you have to go look on Amazon, like, oh, I'm going to find this thing that I'm supposed to do for my friend. What we've done is taken all those articles written by experts and doctors and psychologists and the people that have been there, and we've done integrated shopping with all of it. So you read the list of things, uh, 14 ways to, to help out a family whose kid is in the hospital long term. It's one of our most popular articles. And within it are all of these curated and suggested items, so you can actually just send them from right there uh, within the platform. Right, so uh, a little history on the company. Um, you talk about you found it because of a personal situation. How long have you been at it? How many people are you? Have you raised any money? Kind of where are you on the growth of the company? So we um, we uh, came up with the idea. I am, am co-founded with my husband. I don't want, you know, I know that sometimes can be a big no-no, but <laughs> I have to say we bring totally different skill sets right? to the table here. Um, as as after take separate the, lunches after yeah, you're working after, together all day. After, <laughs> after the loss of our child three years ago, um, we we actually got the, the gumption to go ahead and start this. Um, in April, we began Began working with our team and we hired a team uh, in based out of Thailand and we actually packed up our toddler and headed to Thailand and worked in-house with them for three months to build uh, build our initial prototype we've spent the last few months getting ready to launch our public beta which we launched a month ago response has been awesome we said hey we're gonna go out we're gonna spend a thousand bucks we're gonna drive 10,000 visits to the site and do some testing and see what the response is um, instead we spent $250 because no we haven't raised any money because actually tonight was my first time ever pitching this um, and we brought 33,000 users to the site and been using all of those findings to drive how we're gonna start doing our, our uh, SEM campaigns and start spending some money bringing bringing users and in. the revenue model affiliate e-commerce so what's interesting about that is we have thousands of curated products on the site. Um, you know, affiliate e-commerce has been around for a long time. I actually started working in affiliate e-commerce 10 years ago, um, left that space, but uh, I realized it was actually what we were sitting after this loss that we'd had and I looked around the room and there was all of these flowers and all these meals were showing up. And I don't know who thinks about this when they're like in the throes of grief, but I looked at my husband and I said, do you know what the affiliate share is on floral? Do you know how much, if we had provided everyone the links to send us flowers through, how much money we would have made? And I literally sat there with my notebook and figured out that our affiliate value from all of the gifts and flowers and meals that people sent was over $500 just in, in revenue share from what had been sh had shown up at our door right, right. after our child passed away. So um, we've taken that and we are now expanding it and looking at what the needs really are, are not just the sending of flowers and things, but they are these on-demand services. Well, those services and subscription-based businesses have even higher revenue shares. So for example, we're in a program with um, with Home Chef, send a meal kit, right? When your friend is injured or just got a divorce or undergoing cancer treatment, has a new baby. Somebody sent a meal kit uh, to someone last week, ordered a $60 mm -hmm. gift, Given Kind makes $18 off of that. So the revenue shares on those services are even higher and why we're really focused on moving towards towards those types of services. Right, and now there's so many of them that are available. So many, so in, many. in every geo, uh, in different programs, and they're all wanting to break in too. So as we're bringing users in and really able to say, hey, we're gonna drive a lot of users, we're gonna be able to, to approach those partnerships more strategically than, than maybe just the people who've already who who have thought about affiliate right. uh, a lot of my background is actually in the local listings internet yellow pages space so I've been working with with small and medium-sized businesses on how they bring customers in and um, and those service area businesses have, have struggled with that uh, traditionally as compared to brick and mortar so right, I see right. an opportunity there as a new marketing channel for them uh, through giving kind all right Laura we'll give you the final final say where should people go to learn more givenkind.com. There we go, givenkind.com. Well, super. Well, good luck to okay. you. Good luck tonight. Hopefully you get, you. Some, get some money or computers or whatever they're giving away downstairs. Thank <laughs> All you. All right. Laura, uh, Malcolm, Jeff, Rick, you're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching.